Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey, and this is an App Game Kit game development tutorial. Now in this tutorial, we're going to make it so that our character can shoot bullets. Now I'm in paint.net, and I've already drawn my bullets. Now you can use whatever paint program that you want or get your bullet from some kind of image or Google or whatever. But I'm in paint.net, and before this tutorial, I already drew the bullet. All I did was draw a circle, then painted it white, and therefore it looks like this. So next thing we have to do is go to file, save as, my photos on my desktop, go to the media folder, and I'm just save this as bullet, bullet.png. Okay, so now that we got our bullet, let's go to our code. Okay, so here's our code. Now before we begin, the way I've ordered things in my tutorial is I always put all my new stuff underneath the stuff that we've already done. For example, we've done the background first, and then we made the character, and now we're making the bullets. So the bullets is the third thing right here. We work with the animation stuff, and now underneath that, we have all our bullet stuff. Remember with our player's controls and, and walking, so now we have the bullets stuff. Rightward bullet and a leftward bullet. This is the way I do it, but you might do it a different way, but I just try to organize my code in such a way where I can find things. And the way that you order your code is the way that your computer will read your code. And that's the order in which things will appear on screen. For example, we drew the background first. So that's what the computer is going to draw first. And then we drew the player second. So that's what the computer is going to draw second. And that's going to appear in front of the background. And then we drew the bullets. So the buzz is going to appear in front of the background and our player. Hope this makes sense. And another thing you might notice is, see this green writing here? Well, I wrote some comments so that you can kind of read what, what things do and follow along a little better. I'm going to explain some of these things, but some of these things have comments on it, especially the new stuff. See, right with bullet, and then we're getting the left with bullet down here. So that's another thing that I've done whenever we have new stuff. Okay, so first thing I did was create a bullet image. And I gave that bullet image an ID of 5. And remember, I named this bullet bullet.png here. So I took the name that I gave the bullet and I put it here. Now, in the last tutorial, we set up this Henry right variable and Henry left variable. And we made these two variables to tell the computer whether Henry's facing towards the right or facing towards the left. And we said that one is true and zero is false. And the way I got it set up here is by default, Henry is facing towards the right. So once our game is launched, without pressing anything, if somebody presses the S button, our player will fire to the right because we're told the computer that Henry's facing towards the right. So we won't get a left or bullet until we press the left arrow key because Left for bullet is set to zero, which means false. Now, I have a rightward bullet and I have a leftward bullet. And whenever I'm making bullets, I always like to separate my bullets from the, the bullets that are going to the right versus the bullets that are going to the left. That's to keep the computer from being confused and thus getting errors and weird things happening in our game. So that's why I always keep my rightward going bullets and my leftward going bullets separate. The way I name my rightward variables is I just put the plain name. But the way I name my leftward variables, I end it with the word left on each variable in each class. I did the same thing with the for loop here. And I did the same thing with the for loop here. And okay, so the rightward class we named this bullet and 
active, this determines whether that bullet has been fired or not. And bullet X and bullet Y has to do with our bullet's coordinates and where it will be at on screen. Same thing with the left of bullet. We gave it the bullet a class name of bullet left. Active left means whether the bullet has been fired or not. And bullet left X and bullet left Y has to do with the bullet's coordinate and where it's at on screen. Computer programming, you can't use the class's actual name. You have to attach it to a variable. So that's what we did here. We attached it to this variable called all bullets. And in our code, I'm making it so that Henry can only shoot three bullets at a time. And for the right bullet, now we have a for loop. A for loop, all it does is just duplicates the variables that we're using. So it says all three of our bullets is going to have a ID name of three. And all three bullets are also going to it's going to use this PNG file that we gave an ID of five. So all we're doing is taking our image that we gave an ID of five and we're putting it here. And then our bullet, which we gave an ID of three, is going to be invisible. In App Game Kit, when we're working with the set sprite visible function in this right section here after the comma, zero means invisible, but if we put a one here, it will be visible. So what this means is bullet is invisible because our player hasn't fired it yet and the same thing works for the left word bullet once again in computer programming you cannot use the class's actual name that we gave it instead we have to use a variable to work with it in our code it's kind of like you never use your original artwork or you never use your original book or you never give away your original masterpiece that you've made you always give away a copy so that's the analogy that I use for when I ask variables instead of the original class name. I hope that makes sense. Works the same way in real life, kind of. Okay, so then we put that to a for loop too. So we gave the leftward bullet an ID of seven. And the reason that I use this far away number seven is so that it doesn't clash with these numbers, this bullet up here in this number. Otherwise, if, if I were to put a four here, you get errors because it'll say we already used that number. So that's why I use seven instead of like four. Okay, so I gave my left bullet an ID of seven and I again attached this same image that we used for the right bullet, which we gave an ID of five. And we're gonna use that same image here too. So we're using the same image for the right bullet and we're using that same image for the left for bullet two. And of course the bullet will be invisible. And because this is a for loop, this goes for all three leftward bullets. See, we, we said three bullets here. It goes for all three leftward bullets. Okay, next, we go to the section where we actually fire the bullet. And this part has to do with the right bullet. So first we set up a Boolean variable called shooting. And this just means there's no shooting right now. And we're going to use the S key for shooting. So this says whenever there's no shooting, if somebody presses the S key and Henry's facing towards the right, remember we set up the right word variable up here, which tells our computer which way our character is facing. So that's when we use that variable now. So again, if there's no shooting, and somebody presses the S key and Henry's facing towards the right, then in that case, that's when there is shooting. And that's when the shooting Boolean variable becomes a one. So after that, for all the bullets that will be released, which will be just three bullets at a time. So for all those bullets that will be released, after the, when the S key is pressed, the bullet that wasn't active before then suddenly becomes active. Remember, we set up this active variable way up here and by default in computer programming if we don't assign a variable to this active variable it's zero by default so that's why this active variable equals zero because we haven't set a value to it yet but after the s key is pressed that's when there is a value and that's where we now get this one 
or where we get actors being set to one. So that's how that works. So then after that, Bullet is fired from the player's position. And that's where this Henry X and Henry Y part does. And then that's when that right where Bullet becomes visible. Because remember, when we deal with the set sprite visible function in App Game Kit, zero means invisible, one means visible. See, remember, up here that we set it to invisible because the bullet hasn't been fired yet. But, but after the S is pressed, that's when the bullet becomes visible. Okay, so that's that part. And then, this has to do with the bullet's movement. Once the bullet it becomes active, uh, or the amount of right wheel bullets that will be on the screen, which will be about three bullets, you probably have four because you got the zero here. See, us humans count things as one, two, three, four, five, but computers count like zero, one, two, three, four, five, instead of one, two, three, four, five. So you probably have four bullets. I, I don't know. I said three bullets, but now that I think about it, we probably have four bullets on screen. Okay, so for all those bullets that are active, they will all be going to the right because X and plus in computer programming means going to the right. When any of those bullets get to 900s, 900s is off screen. Because remember, our window size that we set a long time ago is 800. So when the bullet gets beyond 800 or to the 900s mark, which is off screen, the way that we got our code set up is once all three or four bullets have been fired, they stay on a location off screen. And then once they all have been fired, they go back to the player's location and then become invisible again. That's when the bullet becomes inactive. And then here we're just finalizing, you know, our bullet's position. Remember we gave the right bullet an idea three. Remember up here? See? Three. Not this three here, but the the ID of three. So again, we're setting up the position of the bullet. So now we're using the ID of three that we gave the bullet earlier. And we're putting the bullet's coordinates. These coordinates. So we're, and we're putting the bullet's coordinates. So basically it's going to start from Henry's position. That's what this says. Okay, so, and then we do all the same thing with the left for bullet. Once again, when there's no shooting, if somebody presses the S button and Henry's face is towards the left, that's when there is shooting towards the left, which where we get this one here. And then for all those left foot bullets that are fired, that wasn't active at first, after the S button is pressed, that's when they become active. That's where they fire from the player's position. And then that's when the a left foot bullet becomes visible. And once again, this for loop duplicates variables three times for all three bullets. And then once again, all three bullets that are active will fire towards the left because minus three in X means going to the left. And then once the bullet goes to negative 100 in the left direction, which is off screen towards the left, that's when that bullet becomes inactive. And again, for all three bullets. And then here we're just finalizing bullets position. We're using that bullets ID that we gave it up here, seven here. And then we're using the X position and the bullet's Y position, which again is by the player that we set here. Okay, and then don't forget to sync and don't forget loop. Okay, so that's how we set up our right row bullet and left row bullet. So let's go ahead and launch our game and see this stuff in action. Okay, so here's our character that we set up last time. Press the S button, the player shoots towards the right. Because, because again, that's what we set here. See, we started our, we made a one true. So that's why our character is shooting towards the right at first. Because we're telling the computer that our player is facing towards the right. So remember, one means true, zero means false. And right now, Henry's face right is true. So that's why our bullet goes to the right without us doing anything but pressing the S button first. Okay, so so our right bullet is working well. And our player is still walking. 
and we still got our backgrounds and everything. So when I press the left arrow key, that means he is facing towards the left. That means our left bullet is firing. So our left bullet is firing successfully. Uh, once again, we got once again we got four bullets instead of three bullets because that's the way computers count. And whether he whether he is walking towards the left or walking towards the right, the bullets are still able to be fired. Okay, so that's our tutorial. Feel free to take what you learned in this tutorial and then expand on it. Till next time. Thanks. Bye. Dude.